that you may be somebody that loves size and strength. I think every football coach loves size and strength. They love 6'4", 238. But if you are 6'4", 238 and you run 4.39, do you realize how fast that is? It's like, that, that, that would, this guy probably wins our state meet in the 100 meters, right? Now, if you're this size and this fast, you amplify your power. How would you like to have this guy thrown for you, coach? That's beautiful, yes. I mean, is there any doubt that he would be the best thrower you've ever coached? Yes. No, no, no doubt, right? And we, sometimes you find a big guy and he can't throw with a crap. He throws 28 feet. Yeah. <laughs> but this guy, because he's fast and big, you know he's a thrower. Even if he's never been a thrower, you know he's a thrower. Speed creates sprint capacity. Let me explain. We do a capacity workout. At least one, maybe two. Usually in January. This is what capacity is. We will put 10 guys in a line, free lap chip in each one, and, and there will be a, our start cone will be right there. It's like a five yard run in. We have, we have like a, a starting cone, and then a free lap cone, and then a free lap cone 40 yards away. And they run like a 40 yard flight. Spiked up, timing as fast as we can go. And, and as we finish, we walk back. Do you know how long it takes to walk about 50 yards? 30, I think you're right. And then they get back in line. What it ends up being is 10 40s in 10 minutes. Do you understand why we call that sprint capacity? Now, are, are we totally recovered? No, no, no. But are we still fast? Yes. Yes. And it is amazing when we do that, after doing nothing but five second runs, no capacity work, no endurance work, zero, zero, zero. Our guys crush this workout. They think it's hard. But nobody runs like four seven, four seven, four eight, four eight, four nine, four nine. The last one a five five. No one. They run them all fast. And here's the other thing too. This is crazy. Guess who is the top guy? In the rankings, when you add up the times and divide by 10, guess who is, has the best sprint capacity? Fastest. Fastest guy. Every single time. There is never an outlier of he's fast, but he doesn't have good capacity. Never. Your repeat sprint ability is based on your maximal velocity. It's not your aerobic foundation is not your toughness. I mean, it is how fast you are determines your capacity. I, does that make sense? It, I was going to say, do you, so you said you do that in January. Do you, that, do you do that workout during uh, your season as well at all? I know you have other lactate workouts, but do you ever do that one? The, this is a great point. I first did this thinking it was an interesting lactate workout. But what? Now, we don't do blood testing. We, we didn't say, oh, he didn't have much lactate. Right. I just see it in their eyes. Nobody's queasy. Nobody's in the fetal position. Yeah. Never had a guy throw up. Never, not, no glassy eyes, no, all the telltale signs of our lactate workouts, which we'll talk about at the end of today. None of those things happen in this workout. So I'm like, if it's not a lactate workout, it's not a speed workout. So what is it? It's a capacity workout. Now, what we like to do is to do this before we ever do our first lactate workout. It's kind of a ramp. Well, we haven't always done it. We could do it anytime. I, I think this is a pretty good thing to do late in the summer for a football team. Pretty cool. Now, you're not gonna find out anything new. The fast guys will be the best. <laughs> so, if the fast guys are the best, what should, our work be in the summer, aerobic base, speed. 
really relates to football too with the five second play, walk back 30 yeah. seconds and then run another play. Yeah. It's high outputs stacked on top of each other. By the way, the average football drive is only five plays. Five offensive plays and a punt, that's the average football drive. This is 10. So you definitely need to speed, 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 sprint capacity is, now, here's the other thing though. What if every workout was that sprint capacity workout? What would be the problem with that? It's not, getting not getting faster. You're not getting faster. Your, your four or five guys are running four sevens. You're not getting faster. Capacity does not improve speed, but speed improves. I mean, every, every time I talk about this, even to me, it's like, damn, that shit makes sense. It makes sense. Now, speed also creates endurance. I showed this slide yesterday. Uh, Marcellus is winning this not because he's outworked anybody. Matter of fact, he has worked maybe one tenth as much as the other guys, but he's fast. 400. 400, yes, sir. And the last 100 meters of the 400 sucks no matter how good a shape you're in. Have you ever seen those kids? You put them in the 400 for the first time and they're like kind of pacing themselves. Mm -hmm. They still suck at the end. So you call them over and say, you know what? If you save up, you just get last and it's still going to really suck in the end. It's not going to ever feel easy. So don't save up anymore. Win, win the first 300 and then fight like hell. By the way, if you're in the lead after 300, uh, you get a little bit excited. I think it's easier to fight through it when you're winning. We're all front runners, right? We're all front runners. All of us. So we are tougher when we're achieving something. So I say this just like I say with the capacity. So if speed creates endurance, does endurance create speed? No. God, it makes sense. So speed reserve is basically the faster you are, the faster you're, you'll always be. The faster you are, the faster you are in the fourth quarter. The faster you are, the better you are in the last hundred of the 400. Speed reserve basically to me is like, man, if you can run 100 miles an hour, 80 feels 